Hello folks and welcome to an inkdependence.com brief video review and water job test. Today we have this little ink, your Shizuku Kosu Mosu, which had a little typo on mine, but so I thought it was Kosu Mosa for a long, long time. But then I started looking it up on the interwebs and I found that uh, it had a U because I was like, I wonder what this says. This is apparently the Cosmos flower, which I almost actually got today. Uh, I am a gardener and uh, so I almost bought some Cosmos flowers. But I didn't. I'm waiting for another flower sale. So that's a long story long. Short story long. Uh, this is a really pretty uh, pink ink. If you're really into pink inks, this is a cool pink ink. It's maybe not quite... Uh, uh, it's maybe not quite up there with Mont Blanc's pink ink, which you might still be able to get your hands on. I can't remember if that one's a limited edition or not. Uh, but uh, this is a quite a nice quite a nice color. It's kind of a gentle, flowery pink. I actually inked this one up so that I could grade some papers with it. Uh, where'd my pen go? Here it is. Uh, I was using this, which is of course a Lamy Vista. By the way, this weird cloudy thing. That's what you get if you put the cap of a Lamy Vista, or if you just put some like rubbing alcohol in there. Don't do that. Uh, I had some stains in there I was hoping to get out, and instead I marred it all. Well, I don't know. If it had been there too long, I think it would have just melted straight through. Anyway, uh, this is a nice, very nice pink ink. Uh, I've re-inked this one a couple of times. Uh, I didn't love it in the medium nib, or so I guess, I, sorry, I guess I had a fine nib on this one. Uh, I didn't love it in that, but I do really like it in this stub. This is actually very nice in a stub. Um, and it works okay for grading and that sort of thing. I don't mind having pink ink on grading. I just don't care. But uh, the problem with this ink is really that it doesn't per uh, perform particularly well on uh, uh, you know medium or bad paper. This is the other pen I had uh, working here. This is a Diplomat Optimist, which I've reviewed on the blogs. If you're interested in these, uh, go check it out. Diplomat's a pretty cool brand, and they have pretty cool pens. Oh, I got a little bit of a little bit of dark ink on there to clean out my cap. Sometimes you got to clean out the cap of a pen. Anyway, that didn't uh, have any problem here. Yep, still very pink. So as you can see, very very pink ink, and it doesn't really dry to a different color. Oh no, <laughs> rolled one pen over the other. I'm trying a different cam camera angle today. We'll still see how it goes. But uh, very nice. I actually like this color of this ink quite a bit. Uh, but as I was saying, the problem is that it doesn't perform particularly well on. Notebook paper, copy paper, that kind of stuff. Notebook paper, it goes right through. But you can see here, uh, let me look here where it says Lamy Vista, and you know, several places here. The LB there for pounds, that's particularly bad. Uh, but it does bleed, it feathers, it spreads. Here's the bleed. You can read through the back of that. So that's not great. Uh, and that's with a fine nib even. I mean, it's not a particularly fine nib, but it's a fine Lamy nib, which looks like. Oh, I've got it sitting here actually. It looks like this. So, very, very skinny nib. Uh, the Diplomat is also a, technically a fine nib, but if you look at the difference here between those two, there's, yeah, here we go, we'll do this. There's quite a big difference, and this one, this Diplomat is actually a little bit flexy. So, if you want a, a bit of a flexible nib, this has got a little bit of flex to it. The fine does, not the medium. The medium is kind of a nail, but fine does. Anyway, uh, even with a fine Lamy nib, this did tend to uh, bleed, feather, spread, behave badly in general. So uh, that's the drawback to this ink. However, as I say here at the end, if you use this cheery pink ink for writing on good paper, you'll be quite pleased. On Rhodia, it looks great. And actually, even uh, here, actually, you see a little bit of sheen. So if I had something that was putting down a lot more ink, the Diplomat's a little bit wet, but it's still a wet fine. You see a little bit of gold sheen in there, which is kind of cool. You don't see gold sheen all that often, I don't think. Usually it's kind of green or red, but uh, a little bit gold. So here they go. Here it is next to a few other pinks. I don't have Mont Blanc's pink handy. I'm not sure. It's probably in my cabinet somewhere. And I didn't think to compare it uh, because I don't have any other pink inks inked up. Uh, I don't... Well, I, I'm not opposed to writing with them. I just don't have any. Uh, so you'll have to compare it to some reds and such that you might know. Uh, Omazaki C, which is... Uh, uh, come into stock at a couple of vendors around, uh, I've heard, is um, uh, it's kind of an orangey red. It's very orange. Schaefer red is a very, very dark. It's like a crimson red. Uh, Noodler's burning red with the Bernie Sanders burning red is also a very dark red. And then uh, um, uh, orange bovin from Ackerman is great. Uh, but you can see this pink is a very flowery pink compared to all those reds and such. So let's see how this does in our water test here. Let's see, can I wipe it away with this? Yeah, this looks like it'll work. Okay, so here we go. Let's shoot some water on this guy, get some on the words. Sure, why not? Get some right there in the middle. All right, cool. This <laughs> little syringe, I actually got this to put medicine in my cat, but uh, I've washed it out, so now it's a, 
Yeah, now it's just a water syringe. All right. You can see a little bit of pink coming up, but not too bad. Let's just see what happens when I wipe it away. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Hey, not bad, actually. A lot of it came up onto the, uh, the paper towel, but actually a lot less than I had thought that it would. Uh, so let's blot this away. And there you go. Still very much there, actually. This is surprise shockingly legible. So there you go. How about that? And this, uh, I just wrote this yesterday. Yeah, I think yesterday. Yeah, so uh, it hasn't been sitting on the paper too long, but it's not, you know, dead fresh or anything. But yeah, how about that? So you get some on the corner here of this paper towel, which is well used, uh, but uh, not a whole lot. You can still see a lot, you know, on the paper here. So that's cool. The part of that T is gone. So I don't know. This is kind of a mixed bag, but, you know, whatever. It seems like it's uh, holding up better than I thought it would. So water resistant, I don't know, probably not. But uh, at least you won't lose everything you wrote down if you jump, if you dump some water on it. Uh, let's take a look at the chromatography right quick. Oh. Let's see. Come loose. There we go. I just did this one. So there you go. You can see it uh, working there on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you see the complete product, which is very cool, actually. Um, as it's dried, you'll see some, like, orangey tones that have come out here, which are pretty cool. It's a little bit iridescent, actually. That must be where that shimmer comes from. That's kind of neat. Uh, I didn't see that really in the writing, which is too bad. Maybe if I had something really wet. So if you use this for dip pens or something, maybe it would be very cool. Uh, but uh, anyway, there you go. So this has uh, been Irishizuku uh, Kosu Mosu, which is Cosmos Flower, which is kind of a fun little annual around these parts. It's uh, kind of tall. It's got a flower a bit like a primrose. So it's a bit like primrose. Uh, it's actually the same kind of color even as a, a really dark primrose, maybe. All right, enough flower talk. This has uh, been an Irishizuku ink review. Thank you very much to uh, Anderson Pens for sending this out. These are three mil samples. Uh, I forget what they go for for Irishizuku, but I think it's like a buck twenty-five. Uh, you'll find that on their site and in the links below and on the blog. So check out the blog if you are on YouTube. Go to www.inkdependence.com. If you are on uh, the blog, you can go over to YouTube and see all these videos that are also attached to the blog uh, at my YouTube channel. Just uh, click on the video. It should take you over there, I think. Um, and uh, if you're wondering, how can I help to support this amazing blog endeavor that you have got going, Mike? Well, the answer to that is actually pretty simple. It is go to patreon.com slash inkdependence. Patreon is a very cool site, which will allow you to help support uh, bloggers and other content creators that you like. Maybe you've heard about it on some other blogs. It uh, is awesome because it helps us keep our blogs ad-free and also helps us to, uh, you know, pay for blog type stuff things to blog, things to blog with, uh, web space, all that jazz. So uh, thank you very much to my current patrons. Uh, Y'all are awesome, and you have supported me for quite a while, most of you, and I really appreciate that. So uh, thanks goes out to Thomas, David, Jan, Sergey, Brad, Michelle, Paul, and Glenn, current uh, current uh, patrons. So thank you so much, y'all, and uh, uh, peace out. I'll see you later.